I'm John Lannan. I'm a member of the ALP in Victoria. I'm, I'm a member of the Mount Martha ALP branch, which is on the Mornington Peninsula, south of Melbourne. I decided to run for ALP National President because of the need for the party to reform and democratise. As a rank and file member of the party, if elected, I will be a voice for rank and file ALP members. I've never been a member of one of the major factions. I'm a member of the small independent group in Victoria. Um, the, this is a group which has fought for party democracy and against brain stacking in Victoria for mm, the best part of 20 years. I strongly support the values of the party such as equality, fairness, justice, democracy, compassion and environmental sustainability. If elected as president, I will make it my business to try and articulate those values to the Australian community. And I will work for ALP policies which embody those values. The ALP is at the crossroads. Our numbers, our membership numbers are declining. Many members are disillusioned. The party must undertake major reform. We must be prepared to question and change our party's structure, rules and culture. In doing so, it's absolutely vital to focus on the role of the rank and file ALP member. We need to shift power away from current power holders and towards rank and file ALP members. We must make membership of the ALP more attractive and desirable to members of the Australian community. The Brax Carr Faulkner National Review recommendations do not go far enough. Reform is needed not just to show that we're listening uh, and communicating with ALP members. We need reform to put the party into the hands of rank and file ALP members. We need to attract people from diverse backgrounds, from professions, from different walks of life into the ALP. And we need to do that by giving those people a real role in decision-making processes in the party. The election for national president and vice presidents of the ALP is the only ALP election, the only opportunity that all members of the ALP Australia-wide get to vote for office bearers in the ALP. I ask you to vote for me as somebody who will be a voice for ALP members and as someone who will support reforms to give ALP members, ALP rank and file members, a real role in the decision making processes of the ALP. I first joined the ALP in 1975, or it might have been 1974 actually. Uh, this was during the Whitlam period and I was influenced by the, the party's opposition to the Vietnam War, but also to, uh, the, the, I was also influenced by the fact that uh, I liked what the party represented. Um, you know, it's um, values of a better, fairer society. Well, I've been a reasonably active ALP member ever since I joined. Uh, I've held, also, I've had all sorts of roles in the party at the local level, branch president, branch secretary, executive member, federal, uh, federal uh, electorate president. I've been a, a campaign director at the local level. Um, all of those sorts of things. I mean, I've done all the other sorts of tasks that uh, rank and file members of the party do, such as, you know, handing out how to vote cards and um, uh, door knocking, uh, letterboxing, you know, street stalls. I've uh, pre prepared media releases and, um, you know, designed brochures, all of that kind of thing. I mean, I've, I, you know, I've 
I think I've done an enormous lot. So I've even been a candidate. I was a candidate in the last state election. I nominated for ALP president because I wanted the president to be a voice for rank and file ALP members. And I also wanted members to have the opportunity to vote for a candidate for president who was totally committed to reform and democratisation of the ALP. Uh, I guess my vision of the party is a party that is based on membership democracy, a party which is controlled by its own membership. Uh, membership democracy in the ALP I think will lead to a number of things. I think it will make membership much more desirable for uh, ordinary people. Uh, I think that it will I think it will make the party more effective and stronger. Um, I think that we will actually get um, better policy outcomes if we involve ordinary members more. Um, and there are a number of other things that I'd like to see. I mean, I think there needs to be a lot more debate, uh, a, not, a lot more, I suppose, ferment of ideas. Um, there needs to be a lot more diversity in the, in the ALP. I think we need to attract people to be members from a much broader range of groups in society. Uh, I also think that the, the party itself should be much more upfront about its, about its values. Um, I think that we need to be very conscious about the, the, the whole idea of, 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 of selling our values and, and ensuring that our values are genuinely embodied in the policies that we uh, ask people to support. A further thing is uh, that I think that we need to, that the ALP needs to be a national party with a national vision about Australia. Uh, I think at the moment we're still a collection of state parties and I think that we, I think that we need to have this national focus and national vision rather than the, than the petty, um, you know, the, 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 the petty views of individual states and territories. Right, I, I, I think engagement by the President and for that matter Vice Presidents and other members of the National Executive of the party is tremendously important. Uh, look, I'd, try, I'd like to try and engage with ALP members by basically by trying to meet a lot of ALP members, by uh, attending meetings, branch meetings and, and other meetings. Uh, I would make myself accessible. Um, I don't believe that the current executive or you know, president, vice presidents are at all access accessible to uh, ordinary ALP members. I mean, I think we could become much more accessible through email, through websites, and even through the telephone. Um, I also think that it's tremendously important for the president to express the views of ordinary party members uh, to se to senior people in the ALP, to, member, to MPs, to ministers, to the Prime Minister. Well, the, I think the first thing I'd like to say is that it's not just important to recruit party members. I mean, we've, we've got to retain them. I think in the past, the party has had a very high turnover of members. I mean, if we were only able to retain the membership of people who joined the party, I don't think we'd have such a problem at all. Um, now, I mean, to do this, uh, well, uh, uh, one of the most important things is to make membership much more valuable, uh, much more desirable. And I mean, I, and I think the way you do that is by giving members a greater role in the party. And I think genuine membership democracy in the party is really the way to go. I mean, members, it, it, the party has to be a party of ALP members. I think that's, that's the direction that we need to take. The central reform, I think, that we need to make is to ensure that rank and file ALP members elected democratically by other rank and file ALP members constitute the over, overwhelming majority of members to ALP conferences, to national conference, and to state and territory con conferences. I mean, we do have to listen to members. 
um, we do have to we we do have to uh, acknowledge the role that they play in the party. We do have to make members feel valuable. But I think in order to do that, it's not it's not good enough to have a party that isn't run by the members. I think if you have a party that is genuinely run by its membership, uh, I think they will. I think they themselves will ensure that membership for other people is valuable. Is is something. Uh, to be desired. Well, look, I'm interested, I, I guess I'm interested in just about the full range of ALP policies, but uh, look, I used to be a, a secondary teacher. I still work in education. I've worked in education most of my life. So I'm particularly interested in education and I'm particularly interested in uh, public school education and making education at all levels preschool, school, uh, post-school, uh, fairer and more accessible for everybody. Um, I have been a member of the Education Policy Committee in Victoria, uh, and I was also a member of the Foreign Affairs Policy Committee. In fact, I was secretary of it. So um, I'm, I'm also very interested in issues that relate to fairness and equality. Um, I, you know, I mean, I think that, uh, I do think that the party must become much more serious about building a more, a, a fairer, more equal society. And I think Australia has gone backwards in that regard over the last, certainly over the last 20, 30 years. Look, I think a Labor government should focus much more on issues of equality and fairness and poverty. Uh, I think there are particular groups in Australia who have definitely been left way behind and I, 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 I think you know, nobody else but a Labor government is going to do anything about that. I refer to Indigenous people, homeless people, uh, other groups such as uh, single parents, uh, single parent families. I mean there's, there's an amazing amount of, of actual poverty in Australia and we, as a Labor government, we need to, to focus on this and to deal with it. I think we should do much more to open up opportunities for, for young people, uh, particularly educational opportunities at, at all levels. I think we need to address, uh, I think we need to do address education, issues in education um, really at the, at the preschool level, almost the postnatal level. I think we have to provide more opportunities for young people and I think we particularly have to provide more educational opportunities for young people. And that's at every level of education. I mean preschool, school, university, TAFE, uh, whatever. And I think also that we have to provide uh, more educational opportunities and career development opportunities I guess for people at, at all age, ages and um, from all backgrounds. Um, lifelong education I think is something that uh, the party really needs to address. Well if we're talking about the situation now I think there is, I, I think there is scope for members to become more involved in policy development. Uh, I mean, one of the things that I think branches should do is focus on particular areas of policy and, you know, try and develop and submit to their, you know, to their, I suppose, their state policy bodies, uh, policy proposals, and I think they need to do a lot more to follow up. Now, this is an area of complaint, I, I realise, by, um, sorry, this is an area of complaint, I suppose, that. Um, some people, at least in Victoria, complain that they don't get enough feedback about things that they submit. But I think branches really need to be more, uh, sometimes I think branches need to be more uh, vigorous themselves in following these things up. Other opportunities? Well, again, I mean, this is Victoria. Uh, in Victoria, members can become associate members or non-elected members of policy committees and are still able to make a genuine contribution to those, uh, to those policy committees. I think that's a good opportunity.
Um, I think one issue with not just policy committees but the way the party runs is the way that everything is centralised on inner Melbourne. So the opportunities are greater for people who live in the inner suburbs than they are for people who say, even live where I live on the Mornington Peninsula and it's much more difficult if you live at Mildura or somewhere like that. So I think we need to use, um, you know, modern information technology a lot more. I think we need to be able to uh, allow people to participate using, you know, perhaps uh, using uh, digital technology, um, you know, online po policy committees perhaps. And I think the party does have to open up the opportunities for people to participate in policy development. Um, I, I referred to the idea of a, a national party earlier. Uh, I mean, part of that really is giving people access to policy development at the national level. I think really branches should be able to submit policy ideas to the national platform committees or whatever body we have um, at the national level. Uh, and I also think that those national committees should have ra ordinary rank and file members uh, on them. Um, I mean, I think they need to be a lot more connected to ordinary, ordinary party members. Okay, well, of course, uh, members of the Federal Parliamentary Labor Party should um, comply with the platform. I mean, that's really their role, to implement the party's platform. I think that's, that's really vital. Having said that, I think you do have to recognise that there can be situations uh, where circumstances have changed and where perhaps three years or maybe even more after the platform has been written, um, that it would be inappropriate or silly for us to try and implement something. Now, I'm not suggesting that that happens very often. And by the way, I'm not suggesting that it has happened uh, in relation to asylum seekers. But I think we do have to say that. But on the whole, uh, I think Labor MPs are obliged to follow the, uh, the party's platform. Simple as that. I think there are a lot of good proposals in the National Review recommendations, uh, particularly in relation to supporting members and communication between members and the, and the party. I think that part of it's good. Uh, I think there are two recommendations that are particularly important. Uh, one is the recommendation for direct rank and file election of party president and vice presidents at state and territory level. I think that's vital, actually. Uh, we need to stop faction and union dominated party executives and admin committees from intervening in pre-selections and choosing candidates. Pre-selection need to be the outcome of democratic vote of genuine ALP members living in the electorate. Uh, there are a lot of good ideas in the proposals, uh, in the 31 proposals, particularly those that relate to communication with the members and supporting members, encouraging members. I think that's good, but I don't, on the whole, I do not think that the recommendations go nearly far enough. I'm not really convinced about the idea of primaries in Australia. Actually, I'm not even sure they work that, good, that well in America. I am prepared to accept primaries as part of a controlled experiment, but candidly, I don't really think that they are the answer. I mean, the, the, the issue is that we really have to focus on the people who are actually members of, members of the party. And just at the time when we're sort of talking about empowering those people and uh, engaging them, we're now talking about bringing in an extra group. Uh, I'm not sure that this. I'm not sure that this really helps. I, I think the danger is that we could again be undermining the role of of uh, our own party members. Uh, the other thing is, I mean, if we're going to have a, a system of registration for um, you know, for primary election voters. I'm, I think th there's an issue here as to whether we're actually creating a second category of 
membership. Uh, another issue with primaries is, uh, is that I suspect that they are just going to be another focus for uh, particular interest groups to try and, I suppose, manipulate uh, the result of the election. So I, I don't really, I'm not convinced they're the way to go, but I'm prepared to see what happens. Uh, I think the time really has come for us to reassess the role of unions in the Labor Party. Uh, I do think that the relationship between unions and the Labor Party is, an, is a very important one, but I think there are some issues and I think one of these is that the representation of unions in the Labor Party really amounts to uh, representation or over-representation of a relatively small number of, uh, of union leaders who are able to control large blocks of votes in the, in the ALP. Affiliated unions are now, as I understand it, less than 10% of the workforce in Australia. And we, we really need to ask ourselves whether giving uni unions 50% control effectively of the party and, and personally I think it's probably more than that, but anyway, 50% control of the party uh, is the best way to attract all of the other people that the ALP needs to attract if it's going to win government. Um, now we need to attract them not, as vote, not just as voters, but we need to attract them as members and we need to, get them, we need to have them uh, at every level of the party. If we're going to win office, we have to attract the votes of lots of other categories of people besides those in affiliated trades unions. And we do have to ask the question whether the link, whether the 50% control that unions have in the party is really helping us to attract their votes and convince, convince them that we are the party for them. Um, I mean, some of the groups, some of the important groups that I think we need to acknowledge much more are, are, are workers in non-affiliated unions, um, non-unionised workers, self-employed workers. We also, we, also have to, we also have to win the votes of other groups, such as pensioners and retired people. We have to win the votes of uh, full-time adult students, there's about a million of those as I understand it. We have to win the votes of uh, stay-at-home parents and home-based carers and obviously we need to win the votes of the unemployed. Now we need to ask whether the way we have constituted the party is really the best way to attract those people into the party, uh, to give them a role in the party and also to attract those people as voters. Look, the, the fact is that the major reform that we need to make is to ensure that the overwhelming number of delegates to national and state and territory conferences are rank and file ALP members elected by their fellow rank and file ALP members through a genuinely democratic process. Okay. I think at this time we need to ensure that ALP conferences, national, state, territory, are composed of at least 75% of ordinary rank and file ALP members elected by their fellow rank and file members through a genuinely democratic process. Actually, I've got quite a number of ideas for reform. And I'd, look, I'd really like to make this point that as far as I can see, I'm the only candidate for national president who has gone anywhere near to spelling out the kinds of reforms that they would like to see uh, achieved at national conference. Um, now, there are a number of key reforms that I think are vital if the, party is, if the party is to reform. Almost everyone in the party now seems to be talking about reform 
and they seem to be talking about empowering and engaging members. However, it doesn't seem to me that uh, anybody much is saying a lot about the reforms that are actually needed. Uh, as I've indicated, the key reform is for rank and file members to elect the majority of delegates to conferences. That's, that is the key reform that we have to have. We need to put a complete end to branch stacking. I mean, this is just a travesty of democracy, which essentially robs the ordinary member of their full entitlement as a member of the party. Uh, and it also taints every party process. We need to enforce genuine secret ballots in the party um, to stop practices like show and tell, where um, people show their loyalty to the faction by letting the faction scrutinise their ballot or even letting the faction fill in their ballot for internal party elections. I think the key reforms are um, to, to give rank and file members a majority of the delegates at conferences, to get rid of branch stacking, to enforce secret ballot and to require pre-selections by genuine uh, by ballot of genuine ALP members living in the electorate.